comics can boast of this one's legacy. For at least two generations of Indians, the Amar Chitra Katha has been an introduction to Indian history, literature and mythology. Launched in 1967 by Anand Pai, ACK, as it is referred to by the team today, was launched with a vision of introducing kids to the immortal tales from India, and it did it well. While this comic series needs little introduction in India, here are some interesting facts about it. The Amar Chitra Katha has published approximately 480 titles across 36 national and international languages. It has sold over 100 million copies till date. The first 10 titles published to start with under the Amar Chitra Katha banner were actually Disney classics. The first actual Amar Chitra Katha title as we know it was Krishna. Different titles have been best sellers at different times. They include Krishna, Ganesha, the Mahabharata set and also a special edition done on the life of Jesus Christ in 1978. While Anand Pai or Uncle Pai as he was known is so closely associated with Amar Chitra Katha he did not own it he was its editor the series was owned by the India Book House and is now owned by the Kishore Biani led Future Group As a history buff what has really amazed me is how deep Amar Chitra Katha went to pick out its stories from regional histories literature and fables like the Jatakas Rima Puri, the editor of Amar Chitra Katha, joined Anand Pai's team 25 years ago and worked with Uncle Pai, as Mr. Pai was called, closely. I think what worked for Amar Chitra Katha was um, his belief that uh, he needed to tell the stories of India to the children of India. He believed very strongly that he needed to take uh, the heritage that we've inherited in the form of stories to every child uh, in this country, so that you know if a child knew about his past if he was aware of his past that would help him uh, form his own identity and that was the uh, you know that that was the fundamental belief with which mr pai operated and that is the belief that he instilled in all of us so what were the basic principles you know mm-hmm. you said it was the idea was very simple to take the stories from indian history mythology fables to children because they were he sensed a disconnect and that's how amar chitra katha was yes, started yes. but what are salient principles in the way you wrote in the way you uh, selected titles that kind of um, made it a uniform whole yes so uh, he picked stories from four groups four genres one was mythology of course which is the you know prime source of all the stories of from our heritage so it was the mahabharata the ramayana and the puranas the next one was uh, history he got you know heroes from history uh, queens and kings and other characters uh, other other people then there were folk tales and fables so he went to regions to states to you know different parts of india and collected stories from there to the panchatantra the jataka he he uh, i hear that he even read the original in pali so that he could get the original you know the, the authentic story and the last uh, uh, one was visionaries he read the biographies of saints of you know of scientists of uh, business people you know so th- these were the four categories that he chose and uh, within these he sort of covered uh, most of the so what i find very interesting about mr pai is a man himself his first he, he according to the interviews i've re- i've seen of his never read comics before he actually joined indrajal and you know then decided to do amar chitra katha he was an atheist yes. and yes yet yes. there were so many titles yes. in 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 the thing yes. and and third is that not only was the, he the man who uh, envisaged the whole idea of these immortal tales he was also a, a marketeer uh, you know who went and actually took a briefcase and sold it yes. you know so what were the what were the stories that you heard when you joined in yeah i mean he told me these stories himself as to you know how he uh, once uh, he had a briefcase full of comics and the compartment was full of children so he he, he sort of got up to take down the briefcase and we feel that he did it deliberately but the briefcase slipped and opened and all the comics fell on the floor <laughs> so all the children in the compartment came running to pick up the comics uh-huh. and there he was i mean he told them about amar chitra katha he told them stories and before mm. you know you know there were more people who knew about amar chitra katha so that's what he did you know he went personally city to city and he traveled across shop, india to across do this. india and it worked 
The Amar Chitra Katha was so popular in its prime that school libraries stocked them and they were available in the distant corners of India. If a lot went to the back end and the front end, the way it all came together in its artwork is also fascinating. Savi Mascarenas joined ACK straight after college. You know, going back to my own childhood when I started, when I was first exposed uh, to reading comics and uh, Amar Chitra Katha which came to us from, by a vendor, the newspaper guy, along with the Times of India. So I remember, um, like you know, there was this very famous art of Hanuman, which uh, really got my imagination. And uh, the way Hanuman was drawn, a realistic, that was done by Ram Vyarkar. Now Ram Vyarkar was one of the most prolific, and for my favorite, and I guess the most um, uh, enterprising, vibrant, and he was uh, like you know uh, versatile. So the very first title he did was Krishna, and that became a huge hit. And of course, the rest is history. So he he would be the most prolific uh, uh, artist of the early period. Yeah, the early period. Like if I would say number one, it would be uh, Mr. Vyarkar. I've heard stories about some iconic artists. You know, we haven't spoken about the artist who did the very famous Mira by cover. Yeah. it was very spectacular. Yeah. So there was this artist. His name was Yusuf Lean, and Yusuf uh, did Mirabai. Mirabai was one of uh, Mr. Pai's favorite uh, titles, and uh, there's an interesting story which goes along with this. So Yusuf was based in Gujarat, and uh, Mr. Pai happened to be in Gujarat at that time when Yusuf was working on the Mirabai title. So Mr. Pai said, "Okay, fine. Let me just drop in and say hi to you." So he walked into his studio, and he saw Yusuf sitting on in front of his uh, board, and he had depicted this lovely scene of uh, Krishna and uh, Mirabai and there's this beautiful scene. He was just, he had inked it, he had uh, drawn the entire scene and he was in tears. He was so emotional when he actually depicted that scene. So there, there have been these instances of uh, connect, you know, the artists who have developed with their art. And Yusuf was one. He actually poured everything he had and you have to look, if you have seen the Mirabai title, you will know that, you know, the efforts which have gone into because these artists, they had to like, you know, use a lot of the imagination to depict something which is so beautiful. Mm. The other one that stands out is the entire Urvashi, the very ornate yeah. uh, the yeah. thing. Who did that? So Urvashi comes, uh, yeah, again, a very interesting and again, one of my favorite uh, artists, his name is Pratap Malik. So Pratap Malik's art, again, uh, was like for me, uh, Pratap Malik and Vyarkar, and I would be like having a tough choice, like, you know, who's the best? But then they were both uh, equally great in their own ways. So uh, Pratap Malik's art and Urvashi was like, it's like epic. Like if you look at the way he has uh, epitomized uh, uh, his women in Urvashi is beautiful. It's just gorgeous. And it's like, you know, the entire, uh, like if you turn through the pages, it's like flipping through an art book. Like, you know, if you look at them in, in terms of form, in terms of perspective in terms of expression. So they were, they were not just comics. They were not they comics. They were inspired exactly. by Indian art and yeah, they yeah. brought a lot. different uh, genres together. Correct. And if you look at it, I wouldn't even look at it like as a comic book. For me it was like, you know, art just like, you know, alive right there. So the depiction was beautiful. If I look at the compositions of these arts, they were like fantastic. And they have been an inspiration for lots of artists, like, you know, who have grown up reading uh, Amar Chitra Gatha and have gone on to become artists would always speak of Rabba Ayarkar or Pratap Malik as being inspiring for them. A lot of research also went into the artwork. Books, temple art and murals were studied to come up with these gems. When hand done, it would take a week to do just two pages. Today, it has come a long way. The brand is also moving fast into the digital world. So what is the new avatar going to look like? It's two-pronged. So uh, one is that we are focusing on adults a little bit as well to look at the nostalgia crowds. Uh, so we are producing a lot of newer books that are really beautiful and um, they are repurposed content but we are using these covers as more graphic covers um, as collector's editions essentially. Um, besides that, what I'm also looking at is the digital avatar a lot. So, for example, this week uh, we had uh, the new uh, skills for Amachita Katha going up on Amazon, uh, Echo devices. So, kids can have, there are quizzes up, there are stuff from, there's a lot of stuff from Tinkle as well. Um, so, various uh, bits of content that's going on digital in exciting ways as well. 
um, we're also focusing on partnering with studios. Uh, we have uh, a show now on Amazon Prime. We're uh, trying to get it on other platforms as well. You have the Amarchitra Katha series, which premiered about four or five years ago um, on uh, Cartoon Network originally. Uh, so that's on Prime now. Once enjoying almost a monopoly in the children's book genre, the Amarchitra Katha is fighting on multiple fronts today against big international franchises and the multiple screens that kids are hooked onto these days. But one thing ACK does enjoy is a strong resonance and nostalgia value that the management team is keen to leverage on. ACK stands for the purity of Indian mythology, history, culture. In some ways the brand stands, we've grown up on it. Two generations have grown up on it. And people have kind of, if you ask somebody like me, most of my history was learned through ACKs, you know. So it has a little recognition of purity, it has the ability, I trust my kids with that ACK, you know, I can give it to them and say. So from our perspective, going forward, A, we want to make sure that integrity, purity of that ACK stays alive. Now the medium through which kids will relate to it will change, right? A um, lot more digitization is happening, a lot more digital platforms need to be created. Um, probably live sessions in terms of learning and learning centers, that kind of mediums need to be explored. Mm. So what we view ourselves is that, look, the purity, sanctity, does the comic go away? No, that has to, that stays. Because mm. there is a certain charm of cuddling with your comic and reading that. And there is a lot of stuff to do about it. So that will remain. Mm. But I think a lot of other mediums will get explored. Uh, and at the heart of it, we'll still stay true to the culture, the purity, the integrity of what we stand for. Mm. You know, it's, it's been quite a journey. Uh, uh, tell us about the regional spread. You know, one of the things about uh, ACK was the, yeah. the, the on-ground connect, I think. Yeah. So how are you reaching that? And I, I think that, that branch network, if you could yeah. call it yeah. that, was perhaps the most... Uh, so some of that to... has kind of deteriorated because the distribution system in India has changed. Okay. You know, the book distribution whole platform, um, some of it is to do with actually their e-commerce, right, and that invasion. Uh, but a lot of it is just the distribution platform has changed. The book distribution business has changed completely, right? So we are kind of suffering from that. Uh, what we've consciously done is, now over the last, definitely over the last six months, we are actually going down to tier two, tier three towns. Hmm. And we are spreading those networks again. Okay. How successfully we can go into regional distribution, time will tell us. But we are going into that. We are reviving some of the older, like we had a lot of our titles in regional languages, which had gone out of print hmm. over the last couple of years. So we are bringing those back in, very consciously. Uh, and even though we realize that the volumes may not be, may not be that large initially, um, we need to do it. You know, I was looking at the uh, history of ACK and the evolution. I, I do feel that it was ahead of its times in, in a lot of contexts, right. you know, when right. it went into uh, a full production with UTV or it went into digital, uh, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, comic book uh, animation, for instance, yeah. etc. You have Walt Disney as the most successful company yeah. Yeah. in that genre, right? Yeah. What are the lessons from there? And when you look at it with a fresh set of eyes, yeah. where do you think the growth is going to be? It's very interesting. Like we all look at Walt Disney, we're like, oh, we got to become the Disney of India, huh. right? In some ways. Huh. Somewhere, I think Mickey Mouse made a difference for Disney. We've not found that Mickey Mouse yet. <laughs> you know, huh. it was not Disney's love for culture, American culture that drove it. It yeah, was the Mickey true. Mouse that drove, drove it. You know, and it was true. a perfect time, perfect place. It stood for the values of American society, mm. right? And it was kind of exemplifying those values in some ways, in a funny way, in a fun way. Mm. And society was ripe for it. And then Marvel came along and that's what changed Disney's yeah. fortunes in, in, a, in a big way. Um, where we are looking at is we are trying to develop worlds, right? So there's a world of mythology. Now, can we bring modernity to that world of mythology mm. right today if i look at you know talk to people who are working in all the in the international schools ib schools it's actually a full circle you know what happened in 1950s right when when um, um, uncle pai kind of looked at it and said hey people understand greek mythology better than indian history mm. we're coming that full circle you know where and i was talking to someone and they said you know what but it's so it's because greek mythology is presented in a much more cooler way mm we got to bring that coolness factor back. It is a testimony to Amar Chitrakatha's appeal and Anant Pai's vision that this brand is as relevant today as it was 50 years ago. With all that the team is now planning, one hopes 
that the Amar Chitra Katha will continue to introduce generations of young children to the immortal tales from this land. Oh, yeah.